Hello children, welcome back. I am Dr. Jisha Jo. In this session, we are starting with a new chapter, Cell, the Unit of Life. This is the 8th chapter of Class 11 in CRT Biology. What is a cell? Cell is the basic unit of life. Cell is the basic unit of life. And we have seen that cellular organization is uh, one of the important characteristic feature of all living organisms. So that means all the living organisms, whether plants or animals, are made up of cells. That is what is meant by cell is the basic unit of life. Now based on the number of cells, organisms are classified into two. They are unicellular and multicellular. So based on the number of cells present in an organism, organisms are classified into unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms. Unicellular organisms have only one cell. Whereas multicellular organisms have few to many cells in their body. Examples of unicellular organisms are bacteria, amoeba, euglena, paramecium, etc. All these are unicellular organisms. And if you look at the unicellular organisms, we can see that every unicellular organism is capable of independent existence. Capable of independent existence and every unicellular organism is capable of performing the essential functions of life Okay, so every unicellular organism is capable of independent existence. Anything less than the basic structure of a cell is not capable of independent living. So the cell, uh, cell is the basic unit which is capable of independent existence. Anything less than the basic structure of a cell cannot exist independently and second point unicellular organisms are capable of performing the essential functions of life as you can see if you take the example of a bacterium it can engulf the food it can digest the food it can uh, do the process of respiration uh, it can uh, remove the uh, waste materials from the body all these different functions, these are some of the different functions or activities taking place in the cell. All these functions are performed by the single cell. So that is what is meant by the unicellular organisms are capable of performing the essential functions of life. So cell is the basic unit of life. That means all the living organisms are made up of cells. Based on the number of cells, organisms are classified into two, unicellular and multicellular. Unicellular organisms are capable of independent existence and they are capable of performing the essential functions of life. So we can say that cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. Cell is the basic structural and functional unit of all living organisms. What is meant by structural unit? Structural unit. What is meant by structural unit? Just as uh, uh, bricks are used to build up a house, the body of living organisms is made up of cells. So, it forms the structural unit of any living organism. Similarly, what is meant by functional unit? 
any function that is performed by an organism is basically performed or basically done at the cellular level. For example, I need to move my hand. This is done with the help of uh, my muscle cells. I am able to move my hand. That is an activity performed by, by my body. But actually, where is this happening? It is happening in the muscle cells. So, every function or activity that is performed by the uh, organism is actually uh, the activity uh, done by the cells. So, cell is the basic functional unit. Functional unit. So, what is a cell? Cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. Or cell is the basic structural and functional unit of all living organisms. Who discovered cell? It was Robert Hooke who first discovered cell. Robert Hooke discovered cell cell. In 1665, it was Robert Hooke who discovered cell. And what he did was that he uh, examined thin slice of cork under a microscope and he found uh, that the cork was made of tiny box-like compartments. He found tiny box-like compartments in the thin slice of cork which he observed through the microscope. And these box-like compartments resembled the um, rooms in a monastery and he called these box-like compartments as cells. So the term cell was also coined by Robert Hooke and it was Robert Hooke who first discovered cell. But the cell which Robert Hooke discovered was dead cell dead cell it did not have any living uh, component inside it it just had the uh, walls alone so uh, in 1665 it was robert hook who first uh, discovered cell uh, he observed thin slices of cork and he found that uh, the cork was formed of box like compartments and he uh, termed these box like compartments as the cells the cell discovered by robert hook uh, was dead dead cells were discovered by robert hook in 1838 1838 a german botanist named matthias cleden He was a botanist and it was uh, this person, Matthias Clayton, who uh, found that all plants are made up of cells. This was in 1838. So, in 1838, Matthias Clayton found that all the plants are made up of cells. And in 1839... Another person, he is a British zoologist named Theodore Schwann. Theodore Schwann. Schwann. So, in 1839, the British zoologist named Theodore Schwann, he found that all the animals are made up of cells. He also found that the animal cell has an outer boundary wall which uh, in the present we call as the plasma membrane and he also uh, found that the plant cells have a layer outer to the uh, cell membrane or the plasma membrane which is called as the cell wall which is a unique characteristic feature of plant cells. So, in 1838, uh, the uh, German botanist named Matthias Clayton, he found that all the plants are made up of uh, cells. In 1839, the British zoologist named Theodore Schwann, he observed that all the animals are made up of cells. And he also found that the animal cell had a thin outer covering. 
which is the plasma membrane and he also noticed a layer outside the uh, cell membrane or the plasma membrane which is the cell wall which is a unique characteristic feature of plant cells so based on these findings uh, uh, skleden and schwann proposed the cell theory the cell theory was proposed by based on the findings of uh, skleden and schwann they proposed the cell theory which stated that all the plants and animals are made up of cells which serve as the unit of structure and function all plant and animals are composed of cells which are the structural and functional unit so that is the cell theory as proposed by skleden and schwann so once again in 1838 matthias skleden found that all the plants are made up of cells in 1839 theodor schwann he observed that all the animals are made up of cells he also observed the thin outer membrane which is the plasma membrane or the cell membrane in animal cells and he also examined or found the out the wall which is a cell wall which is a unique feature in plant cells and both of them based on their findings skleden and schwann proposed the cell theory which stated that all the plants and animals are made up of cells which are the structural and functional unit of life in 1855 another person named rudolf virchow he proposed omnis cellulae cellula which means cells arise from pre-existing cells so it was in 1855 rudolf virchow proposed omnis cellulae cellula which means that new cells arise from pre-existing cells and then the cell theory was modified and according to the modified cell theory uh, all the living organisms are made up of cell and cell products and the second point is all cells arise from pre-existing cells that was the finding put forward by rudolf virchow so in the uh, modified cell theory the finding of rudolf virchow was also included so the cell theory the statements of the cell theory include first one all the living organisms are composed of cell and cellular products cell products and number two new cells arise from pre-existing cells so i hope the cell theory is clear to you so it was skleden and schwann who proposed the cell theory but in 1855 rudolf virchow proposed omnis cellulae cellula which means new cells arise from pre-existing cells and uh, the cell theory was modified adding this statement also to the original theory so according to the modified cell theory all living organisms are made up of cells and cell products and number 2 new cells arise from pre-existing cells so cells uh, differ in size shape and functions okay and the smallest cell smallest cell is that of mycoplasma which is about 0.3 micrometer in length Okay, the smallest cell is mycoplasma, and it is about point three micrometer in length. Smallest cell in the human body is RBC, RBC, which is about seven micrometer in length. So the smallest cell we know cells differ in their size the smallest cell is that of mycoplasma which is about 0.3 micrometer in length and um, the smallest cell in the human body is RBC which is about 7 micrometer in diameter then the longest cell longest cell is the nerve cell nerve cell is the longest cell 
and the largest cell largest cell is the ostrich egg ostrich egg so we can see that cells differ in their size the smallest cell is that of mycoplasma the largest cell is the ostrich egg and the longest cell is the nerve cell or the neuron now we can also see that the shape of the cell varies and the shape of the cell depends upon the function performed by the cell Okay, shape varies and the shape of uh, a cell depends upon the function uh, performed by the cell. A simple example, we can see a few examples, RBC. The shape of the cell is biconcave disc shaped. Biconcave disc shape, that is the shape of RBC. What is the function of RBC? To uh, enable uh, the efficient uh, transport of oxygen. So RBCs are uh, oxygen transporters and this particular shape enables the RBC to uh, be efficient transporters of oxygen. Similarly, uh, WBC, the shape of WBC, amoeboid in shape. This particular shape of the uh, WBC uh, help the uh, uh, WBCs to squeeze out through the walls of the capillaries and to engulf the uh, disease causing germs by the process of phagocytosis. So that is the function of WBC and it is this particular shape that enables the WBCs to squeeze out through the walls of the capillaries. Then the nerve cell, we have seen the nerve cells are long cells. Long cells having uh, three different parts, the cell body, the cy cell cytoplasmic extensions, which are the dendrites, and the long extension, which is the axon. So nerve cells are long cells, and uh, the function is to carry impulses from the sensory organs to the brain or the spinal cord and carry the impulses back uh, from the brain or a spinal cord to the effectors or muscles or glands so they are long cells okay another example is uh, uh, tracheids tracheids we know they are components of the xylem and tracheids are elongated cells long cells that are elongated cells uh, which are placed end to end the function of the tracheids is to transport water in plants so the shape of the cell depends upon the function performed by the cell so from this we can see that cells vary in size shape and functions now, based on the presence or absence of a nucleus, uh, the cells are classified into two. They are the prokaryotic cell and the eukaryotic cell. Prokaryotic and eukaryotic. So, prokaryotic cell, prokaryote, a prokaryote, pro means primitive early or primitive so prokaryotes have a primitive type of nucleus here there is no well-defined nucleus the genetic material is just seen within the cytoplasm like that there is no nuclear membrane surrounding the genetic material so such type of cells have a primitive type of nucleus where there is no nuclear membrane surrounding the genetic material Example of a prokaryotic cell is uh, a bacterial cell. Whereas in eukaryotes, uh, eukaryotes have a true nucleus. Here the uh, nuclear material, the genetic material is present inside a nuclear membrane. There is a well-defined nuclear membrane surrounding the genetic material. So, cells are classified into two based on the presence or absence of nucleus, uh, prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell. Prokaryotic cell has a primitive type of nucleus in which the genetic material is not enclosed within the nuclear membrane, whereas a eukaryotic cell has a true nucleus in, with, uh, in which uh, a well-defined nucleus is present. So, uh, in uh, the coming sessions we shall see uh, or we shall have a detailed study about the structure of prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. 
So children, in this session we have discussed what is a cell, who discovered cell. We have discussed about the cell theory proposed by Matthew. Uh, Skleden and Schwann and uh, what is the modified uh, cell theory uh, then we have uh, come across uh, the um, we, we also saw that cells differ in their size shape and function with examples we have seen and we have seen that cells are basically classified into two prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell so I hope this session is clear to you. If you have any doubts or suggestions, please give your doubts and suggestions in the comment section. Thank you.